Hi Tree Monsters, I'm Doug Turrington, and welcome to the inaugural edition of the Tree Monster TV News Bulletin, where we discuss the happenings of Tremont. If you're one of the many tree monsters who have been following the Cleveland Metropolitan School District's recommendation to move the Tremont Montessori, we have an update. We caught up with Corey Reardon of Tremont West to give us more details on the latest meeting. Hi, it's Doug Turrington here with the Tree Monster TV. Last night, the Cleveland Metropolitan School District held another meeting in regards to the future of the Cleveland schools, including the Tremont Montessori. Today, we're here at the Tremont West Development Corporation to talk to Corey Reardon about the developments of last night's meeting. Let's go talk to Corey. There was another meeting last night. How did that go? At this most recent Board of Education meeting, uh, the board was considering uh, all of their options, and there are three schools that uh, they need to have further conversation about and want to see uh, want to see more work done around Tremont Montessori being one of them. And their number one option for Tremont Montessori is to rebuild the school on site and provide Montessori education. So that's a huge win. Um, I think there's a lot of questions still unanswered. Uh, the, the main one being they have now expanded from five schools to considering eight schools, and they still only have funding for five schools. What, what the board did last night was they tabled uh, final decisions until at least September. Um, so they could get a clearer picture of both what the funding stream means, because I think there's conversations still happening with Columbus, um, and additionally how the high school conversation factors in. So they want to know, uh, they want to have all their cards on the table and know where their decision points are rather than just adopting the, the preferred alternatives or, the, uh, or what scope they're at now because they want to make right decisions for the next 30 years, right? So I think that's a really smart decision by the Board of Education um, and again just uh, appreciate their, their efforts and, and willingness to really dive into the details and that Eric Gordon, um, the CEO of the schools, really facilitated that process. And when he said, I had some nervousness um, when he said these are our emerging recommendations and it was close Tremont, that he would have that in the bag, right? That those were not uh, emerging recommendations, those were his recommendations and he was going to push it through the board because a lot of times that's by the time you do all that work you want to get that done. Um, that was not the case and so I respect Eric and, and his process uh, to really get the facts and get the information and in fact throughout that process he added facts that we were giving him or information we were giving him into that process to make sure the, the full picture was being taken into consideration. So even though things are on the table at this point, it sounds like there's a little bit a uh, reason for optimism at this point. Well, I, I think there's a lot of reason for optimism when you go from we're going to close the school uh, and move move what the, the community has fought for for a long time, the Montessori curriculum, we're going to move that to another location. Uh, that was a death knell for, for Tremont School. Uh, now we're seeing that the emerging recommendation is saying something completely different, that, uh, that, that the school is going to be in this community long term if the Board of Education can figure out the details. So the last school board meeting that we covered was kind of one of the last public steps. Uh, they had this other meeting last night. What can people do to still make sure that they're engaged? How can they stay up to date on everything? We have to continue to keep up the pressure to let people know, let the Board of Education know that this wasn't a one-off, that we're committed long-term to ensuring the future of this school. So continue to send your letters, continue to send them to CEO Gordon, continue to send them to the portal um, where they're taking feedback, which the Board of Education gets within their packets, and in fact ends up in the presentations when there's additional information. Continue to fight. Well, uh, thank you for sitting down with us today, and we'll... Uh Look for more updates in the future. Thank you for having me, Tree Monster. Thanks to Corey Reardon for that update. We'll provide you with more as the story develops. In our second story, Clark Avenue residents are still dealing with damages from a January water main break. The city of Cleveland recently updated them on potentially reimbursing them, but it wasn't the news that they were expecting. We have more with Jeremy Biello. 
Hello, Tree Monsters. This is Jeremy Biello reporting once again on Clark Avenue, where behind me, back on January 30th, a water main broke, causing much damage to local residents and businesses down Clark Avenue. We talked to some of the locals about this matter and their feelings after receiving a letter from the city denying any damages. Okay, so Richard, now tell me, a lot of damage was had to your basement from all this flooding, no? Yes, quite a bit of it. Quite a bit of damage. We've lost a couple of furnaces, hot water tanks, and a lot of supplies that uh, we use for the bar. And um, how much did that cost in damages? We're probably looking with the cleanup and everything in excess of about 12000 12000 It knocked out our furnace and our water heater. And because I couldn't get my furnace repaired that day, I had to wait about a week in order to get the money together to make repairs. Every pipe in my house froze. Most of the pipes burst. And I could get the water turned back on downstairs, but when it came to the upstairs, I ran out of money. So we still haven't made those repairs. And my son, who's living upstairs, has to come downstairs to use the bathroom. I personally spent over $3,000 on repairs, and $3,000 I didn't have. Now, Dale, you had some damages to your house, too, from the flooding. Yes. Uh, I had two and a half foot of water. I also have a, uh, a step down. must have been a cold storage room. So that room is probably three foot below my actual basement floor. So that room had about five foot of water. I uh, lost all my Christmas decorations. I had carpet I had purchased for the upstairs of the house. Uh, I didn't lay it yet, so that was downstairs. Lost all that, it was brand new, never installed. Um, miscellaneous tools. Uh, a friend of mine actually stays in the basement, so he lost a bedroom, a dresser, chair. So uh, yeah, it, it's been rough. Plus I also had to replace one of two furnaces, uh, one hot water tank, and I think that was it as far as the big ticket items. And then on top of all of that, I had uh, lost a turtle because of the ice cold water that was in my basement. I uh, have a pond in my backyard and usually come winter time, I take all the fish and all the turtles out and then move them into my basement. And uh, seeing that the water got so high, the turtles of course were swimming around and I actually lost one of them because, I mean, it was ice cold water. So. There was one tragic loss in the family, I guess. When did you first make contact with the city over this matter? Uh, it, it, it was oh, probably about 60 days ago or something after the, uh, about 30 days after it happened, we put in a, uh, a claim with the city trying to get some help to uh, get back on our feet because that was, that was quite, a, quite a loss for us. So, And then we waited and then we uh, received uh, a letter from them uh, weeks later. Uh, stating that uh, they denied our claim. Denied it. Denied. Um, you know of other people. A lot of the street was... Uh, our side of the street got hit uh, pretty good. Our neighbors, they lost a few furnaces across the street, hot water tanks, furnaces, supplies. And uh, they all put a claim in with the city, and uh, they were all denied also. Did you approach the city about reimbursement for damages? Yeah, I filed necessary paperwork with them, um, took pictures. Um, took them about a month, but they sent me a denial letter because uh, they said it wasn't something that could have been seen prior to it actually happening. They wasn't made aware of a problem, so therefore they can't take care of the problem. And I was hoping for reimbursement from the city for the repairs that I did make so that I could continue to work on my house. But I just got a letter from the city this week that said the water department came out and turned off the water when they were notified that there was a leak. And that's all that they could do. So sorry you were inconvenienced, but we're not gonna reimburse you for those repairs. And again, I say that's horseshit because they let that water run from 10 o'clock at night until four o'clock in the morning. So for six hours, there was a geyser out there pouring thousands of gallons of water into the street. And actually when I watched the news, they said it was one of the oldest sewer lines in the city of Cleveland. So then I'm wondering what the shelf life is of a sewer line. And if it was one of the oldest, why wasn't it replaced prior to it breaking? That would make a lot of sense. Yeah, they uh, must have some sort of documentation of what they do and you know what lines they're switching and changing. 
But anyway, they also came out today and they uh, they TV'd it, so we're waiting for the results to see if there's any damage to the sewer or not. Last week when they were here cleaning it, they were here over eight hours and they just kept cleaning and it just kept collapsing. So we are wondering if that had something to do with the main sewer break that we had here that caused us all the problems. So that's why we're at the, uh, the junction right now. We're waiting to see how the sewer is and where we could go from there. We reached out to city officials, but none of them returned our calls for comments about the denied claims. Stay tuned, Tree Monsters, because we'll be keeping you updated on the city's reaction to the new claim that Clark Barr has filed. This has been Jeremy Bello with Tree Monster TV. Thanks, Jeremy, for that report, and thank you all for tuning in to the inaugural edition of the Tree Monster TV News Bulletin. Make sure you pick up the Tree Monster at your local Tremont newsstand and check us out on social media. We'll see you next time. Hey Tree Monsters, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Tree Monster TV. If you have a story to tell or you're interested in marketing your business or organization with us, make sure you look at the information below and we'll see you on the next episode.